Good morning, everyone, on this Monday in the 22nd week after Pentecost. I'm Brother Ron Fox with morning prayer from the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. Our Brother Joe Gauss and I have switched days because one of his co workers is out on maternity leave. So he is the day shift clinical coordinator now, so unable to officiate on Mondays. As well as being as well as it being Monday in the 22nd week after Pentecost, we commemorate Miriam of Kedon. And so that they are also honored, we are going to remember James Hennington and his companions. They came on the calendar yesterday, and since Sunday overrides any lesser feast, uh, they were not commemorated. So first. Miriam of Kedon was orphaned at the age of seven and so then lived a life as an anchorite with her uncle Abraham, a hermit, for 20 years. When she was a young woman, one of the monks who followed Abraham desired Miriam. After a year of attempts, they finally had sex. Upon losing her virginity, she fell into despair, and rather than confess her sins to her uncle, she moved to another town and established herself as a tavern prostitute. In a dream, Abraham realized that Miriam had, take, had been taken captive by a life of sin. He searched for her for two years. When he finally heard of her whereabouts, he put on military garb, mounted a horse, and set out to the town where she resided. He entered the tavern and requested that he take a meal with her. They shared a lavish meal together and finally retreated to Miriam's room, where Abraham said, My daughter Miriam, don't you know me? Whatever has happened to you? Why did you not just tell me when you had sinned? I would not have been angry with you, for who is without sin except for God alone? I would have done penance for you myself, yet instead you have left me all alone in unspeakable sadness and grief. Together they returned to Kedon. Once there, Miriam pleased God more by her sincere repentance than she ever had by her virginity. James Hannington and his companions, as I said, commemorated yesterday, among the new nations of Africa, Uganda is the most predominantly Christian. Mission work began there in the 1870s with the favor of King Mutesa, who died in 1884. However, his son and successor, King Mwanga, opposed all foreign presence, including the missions. James Hannington, born 1847, was sent out from England in 1884 by the Anglican Church as missionary bishop of Eastern Equatorial Africa. As he was traveling toward Uganda, he was apprehended by emissaries of King Mwanga. He and his companions were brutally treated, and a week later, on the 29th of October, 1885, most of them were put to death. Hennington's last words were, Go tell your master that I purchased the road to Uganda with my blood. The first native martyr was the Roman Catholic Joseph Makasa Balankudamedi, who was beheaded after being rebuked the after having rebuked the king for his debauchery and for the murder of Bishop Hannington. On the 3rd of June, 1886, a group of 32 men and boys, 22 Roman Catholic and 10 Anglicans, were burned at the stake. Most of them were young pages in Mwanga's household, from their headman, Charles La Wanga, to the 13-year-old Kizito, who went to his death laughing and chattering. These and many other Ugandan Christians suffered for their faith, then and in the next few years. In 1977, the Anglican Archbishop Janani Luwum and many other Christians suffered death for their faith under the tyrant Idi Amin. So that continued for many years. The Lord, the Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. For morning prayer on this Monday in the 22nd week after Pentecost, today's Psalms, are one of, sorry, I got on the wrong page here. 144, 145, and 146, beginning on page 800. Our canticles today are 9 and 19 on pages 86 and 94. The easiest and most accessible way for most of us to pray the offices is use the app provided for by my community, the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, which can be found at dailyoffice.app at dailyoffice.app in the upper right hand corner there are three small bars and when you click on the bars it takes you to the options page just a matter of scrolling through you want to ensure you're set for the 30-day psalter the traditional lord's prayer and the general thanksgiving 
It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that's part of your practice, I invite you to do that. We'll take just a moment to get centered here and begin with morning prayer on this Monday in the 22nd week after Pentecost. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 144, 145, and 146, beginning on page 800 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands to fight and my fingers to battle, my help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are we that you should care for us? Mere mortals that you should think of us? We are like a puff of wind. Our days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Hurl the lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the great waters, from the hand of foreign peoples, whose mouths speak deceitfully, and whose right hand is raised in falsehood. O oh God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-string lyre. You give victory to kings and have rescued David, your servant. Rescue me from the hurtful sword and deliver me from the hand of foreign peoples. <clears throat> Just a moment here, I had to let somebody in. Verse 12, whose mouths speak deceitfully and whose right hand is raised in falsehood. May our sons be like plants well nurtured from their youth and our daughters like sculptured corners of a palace. <clears throat> May our barns be filled to overflowing with all manner of crops. May the flocks and our pastures increase by thousands and tens of thousands. May our cattle be fat and sleek. May there be no breaching of the walls, no going into exile. No wailing in the public squares. Happy are the people of whom this is so. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. I will exalt you, O God, my King and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty. 
and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zechariah. On the 24th day of the 11th month, the month of Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Iddo. And Zechariah said, In the night I saw a man riding on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in the glen, and behind him were red, sorrel, and white horses. Then I said, What are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. So the man who was standing among the myrtle trees answered, they are those whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth. Then they spoke to the angel of the Lord who was standing among the myrtle trees. We have patrolled the earth, and lo, the whole earth remains at peace. Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you withhold mercy from Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you have been angry these seventy years? 
Then the Lord replied with gracious and comforting words to the angel who talked with me. So the angel who talked with me said to me, Proclaim this message. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am very jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion, and I am extremely angry with the nations that are at ease. For while I was only a little angry, they made the disaster worse. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I have returned to Jerusalem with compassion. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and the measuring line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Proclaim further, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city shall again overflow with prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. Here ends the reading. The first song of Isaiah, Canticle 9 on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write in the book what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining with full force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of Hades. Now write what you have seen, what is and what is to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw on my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Here ends the reading. The Song of the Redeemed, Canticle 19, on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God of holiness and strength, rescue us from the sins that ensnare us and destroy the evils that defame us, that like your servant Miriam of Kedon, we may find our own selves inseparable from your love made known in Christ Jesus our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, who called your faithful servants, James Hennington and his companions to be witnesses and martyrs in Africa, and by their labors and sufferings raised up for a people for your own possession, pour forth your Holy Spirit upon your church in every land, that by the service and sacrifice of many, your holy name may be glorified and your kingdom enlarged. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. I invite you to offer whatever prayer, petitions, and thanksgivings you may have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers, which are about to follow. And during this week of October 29th, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, Phyllis, Mark, Eli, Ron B., Jerry C., Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, Mary, Tom R., Ed, Thomas Priest, Susan T., former President Carter, Ken, Deacon, Mary, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Eddie, Donald, John, Tim, Connie, John, Warren, Scott, those wounded in the mass shooting in Maine, Mary Jane, Eric, and all with COVID-19. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, all who mourn, especially Bruce, peace of mind for Cecilia, for all refugees and migrants, especially those sheltering in our neighborhood. 
for those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction, for peace throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, for the work of care for friends and care for real and all whom they serve. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners, for members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. <clears throat> For the birthdays, birthday today of Mother Erica Takis and tomorrow, Will Harvey. The wedding anniversaries of Patrick and Karen Willems, David Collins and Elvira Hole Collins, and Mother Jackie Cameron and Robert Pigott. The diaconal ordination anniversary of Father John David Van Doren. And we pray for the departed, remembering Matthew Perry, Chuck Kelly, all killed in the mass shooting in Maine, Carmen Dominguez, and Bishop Russ Jacobus. Now the anniversaries of their deaths for Virginia Waters, Howard Hibbert, Arthur Tuber, Joe Anderson, Jeffrey Benson, Sidney Farron, Father Sterling Minter, Jean Elizabeth Sewell, Don Powell, Stephen Yannick, Avenda Vance, Damian Vanover, Harold Hayden, Audrey Boisenen, and John Ford. And we pray urgently for peace in Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Gaza. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Once I get it back up here on the screen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we shall forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us could infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Monday in the 22nd week after Pentecost, the commemoration today of Miriam of Kedon, and we remembered also the commemoration of James Hennington and his companions who were on our calendar yesterday. Throughout the week, there are plenty of opportunities to worship at Atonement. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, we have a Mass at 7.30. Tuesday evening, evening prayer, also on Google Meet at 5.30. Wednesday evening, a Mass at 6.30. A very important Thursday evening Mass at 7 p.m., a solemn requiem for the Feast of All Souls. On Saturday, our Healing Mass. Preceded by the Rosary at 9.30, the Healing Mass is at 10. And on Sunday, the Transferred Feast of All Saints with Masses at 8, 9, and 11. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here each morning at 8.30 on Google Meet. Have yourself a great day. God bless everyone.